Hey, what's up, everyone? How y'all doing today? Who we got here? Who's hanging out, man? Hit me up in the chat. How am I supposed to know that it's party time if you guys aren't talking to me? You know you got a chat. You know what to do. Oh, I haven't gotten to play a lot of guitar today. I'm just teaching some lessons. Forever for you to do something off this album. I've transcribed Arkansas Traveler and Salt River off this one. Nice, man. Hey, everyone. Yeah. So we're doing it off the Homespun uh, instructional DVD. I'm sure there's 
some tabs already after this forever. If the homespun comes with tabs, I don't know, but that's what we're going to do. What's up? Christopher, you live in Raleigh. Come over, man. Come hang out. hearing that too that's crazy man i'm not smart enough for that well i played a, a little ukulele in school <laughs> we used to take it on uh on like band field trips we would always always bring ukuleles because of course they wouldn't let us play our instruments on the bus weird how that works <laughs> uh, joey how you doing tell me how your life is joey All right. Yeah, I'm excited about this one today. I think that uh, I think that this will be a fun one, just because I normally don't play whiskey for breakfast out of the D or out of the C position. I normally play it out of the D shapes. Um, so I'm used to playing it like this, not like this. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I can figure it out. What's up, Dom? You've been figuring out uh, some tabs in Guitar Pro Seven. I like hearing that. Guitar Pro is a great program, man. I used PowerTab for a long time, but I'm glad I use Guitar Pro now. Um, for the people that ask that question too, let me know now. You know, you want to hear about the setup? I'll tell you. I use Guitar Pro Seven. Um, I use the slowdown features of YouTube. That's pretty much it. Just like always, too. If you want to sign up for lessons, you can do that at lessonswithmarcel.com. We got a bunch of merch. We got everything else. Go check it out if you haven't yet. We're just hanging out, waiting for some people to roll in. Oh, this guitar, man. said whiskey before breakfast yeah i feel that i think we all have here let me raise my hand good use of the waving emoji <laughs> uh, all right everyone oh oh awesome man we got someone from the uk you're 15 years old you recently discovered bluegrass? That's all right, man. Bluegrass is just us destroying your music. <laughs> all right, let's go listen to this break, and we can uh, we can start transcribing. All right, here we go. Only coffee for breakfast. <laughs> uh, what year is the Martin? The Martin is my friend Jax here. I'll tell you guys about it before we watch the video. Um, this is a uh, D35. Maybe you can see through the sound hole, but it's got a three panel back. It's got a rattlesnake tail in there. You need the rattle in there. <laughs> uh, but it's from 1969, I believe. Um, but it is Jack's grandfather's, and I sort of have it on indefinite loan, I suppose. Um, I've replaced some parts, but it is more or less the same guitar. <laughs> so it's got new bridge pins, and it's got... Uh, a new bridge in there, I guess. This needs to be sorted out here. It's starting to lift up. You could probably get a post-it in there or something. 
I don't know, maybe I can show you. It's uh it's not great. Oh look. Love piece of paper starting to go in. It's probably need to get that re glued. That's alright. I love this guitar anyway. <laughs> alright, let's listen to this break. Also, I wanted to say, if Homespun does have a tab for this, go out, get the Homespun video. I cannot replace the magic of a Homespun VHS, maybe. <laughs> but but seriously, get, get the DVD. Uh, get, I'm sure it comes with a tab booklet. I'm sure it's something that's more uh, reliable than what I'm about to do, because I'm just about to transcribe it live, and I might make mistakes and all the rest. Uh, but support Homespun, because they've been doing this for a long time. And they make good products. That being said, let's listen to what Norman has to say. Okay, we've got it on the third fret. Now that puts us into the key of E flat. Spoilers. And I'm going to play this tune on the third fret just because that I like the sound of it there. And <laughs> it projects well if you're playing on stage on a sound system to play in higher keys on the guitar when you're playing strictly acoustic. Plus the fingering's <laughs> a little bit shorter and a little softer and a little easier. All right, Norman. So I will play you. a tune that I think you might be familiar with called Whiskey Before Breakfast in the key of E flat. Do it, Norman. Let's let's not butt up more than we could do. That was that was two A's, two B's. Let's start there. Um, you know, I always like to write down where the break starts, so maybe I should have done that. Let's find where the break starts. A tune that I think you might be key of E flat. Okay, so forty-eight seconds. This is when we take out our our post-it note and we write break starts. <laughs> uh. Otherwise, we'll just constantly be looking for it, and that's no good. Okay. All right, Norman. You're wholesome, and I love it. Let's start writing this down. In the key of E flat. All right, so he's starting right on the top. Oh, whoops. Starting right on the top here. And it sounds like a uh, hammer on and then a little strum. Lots of little strums in this arrangement. Maybe we'll put them all in parentheses just to be clear that these are less emphasized notes. It helps if you write on the right string, I always find. Um, I'll tell you what, what I'm hearing in this melody too. So um, C shapes, obviously. This hammer-on maneuver, super common. So as soon as I heard that, of course, I can see it too because there's a video, which is nice. Um, but I, I know what's going on there. Uh, we got these little strums in between. Real common to kind of keep some of that... Uh, uh, that boom check feeling alive for him to put in those little strums. We hear that in lots of different arrangements too. Um, so far, nothing too incredible. I think we're going to start hearing more major pentatonic stuff. So it sounds like he's going past like the fourth degree of the scale and stuff. B flat. Let's listen again. Right. Da 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 ba da ba. Now we got little strums over the F chord. I will prove to you what I wrote as well. So, so far we have this. I 
I think I can lock that in. I think that's what I heard. I said this in the last transcription video, but it's worth saying again. Um, a lot of times I just overcommit to guesses. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that I expect to see and things that I expect to come out. And so it, it helps my ear and it helps me be a better transcriptionist if I just constantly check to see if I can, you know, just feel what's happening. Um, I know there's been there's been some comments out there saying that it's black magic or something, but it's certainly not. It is certainly not magic. Uh, let's just uh, normal play again. In the key of E flat. Go for it. Okay, so he actually plays the melody chunk here. Boo -da 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 -da. Some of these might be a little double stops and stuff. That's not concerning me right now. Well, we can fix that later as we go. And of course, as soon as I say that we can fix that later, I'm gonna go back and fix it because I can't stand looking at it now that I heard it. Da 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 da. So this is a really common um, tag phrase. Do da 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 da. I'm gonna try to feel this one out. So it sounds like I heard the root note on the downbeat right here. Um, maybe it was this. Let's check it on my instrument. Yeah, I believe that. Hey man, thanks for subscribing. Don't worry, I understood your typo. <laughs> I'm I'm smarter than I look, generally, generally speaking. Let's get in some labels right here. I hope you're all playing along on your guitars at home, seeing how wrong I'm getting it, or how right I'm getting it, you know, either or. Um, but let me know if you find anything. You know, I appreciate the uh, the comments, and I want to know if you see that I got something totally wrong. Let's fix that key signature, put the capo marking, with all the labels. Let's go in, let's do some of these pick strokes. The reason why I'm more or less finishing up this part is because I think we're going to hear more of this. Maybe some copy and paste action is going to happen. So it helps if this section is kind of finished up, then it'll be make the copy and paste process easier. Uh, we'll find out though. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So we get this strum again. And it sounds like he's going back to the top, but I don't think he played all of this identically because I remember hearing some drones and stuff. Okay, so that was definitely different. It sounded like he was alternating between the root and the third, and then the third and the fifth. Something like that. Sounds like you have a nice guitar to uh, start learning Dustin a baggie on, man. That's good stuff. Are you learning uh, unison? I I don't know what you mean, Joey, but I love you. Um, <laughs> are you learning the uh, um, the unison is the most important interval? Oh, okay, yeah, of course. Uh, you're talking about like the drone move that he's about to pull. Actually, I think it was this one. We'll find out. Um, are you learning the dust in a baggy break from uh, like the living room performance or the the other one? I can't remember what it was. There was sort of a a fancy one that started with uh, with this lick. It was like. I don't remember. 
remember any more of it though. I just remember it started with that lick. Um, and the living room performances are a little bit easier. <laughs> All intervals are equal in my eyes. Oh man, you guys. I know where this is going. Hashtag all intervals matter. Sounds like he actually hits the open string right there. And this sounds like it is the open D string. So a quick scoop up to that unison. Uh, whoops. There we go. All right, I think that's right. Whoa, did you hear that? We couldn't see his right hand in the footage, but it sounds like a drone. Yeah, you don't get to see it, but it sounds like he goes uh, maybe something like this. Okay, let's write that down. That's interesting. And I think he goes back to this line he played earlier. <laughs> Let's make sure that's actually true. That was a lot of copy and paste. Yeah, I think that's it. Good. Thanks for using the same tech. Ooh, another. <laughs> the, the sacred unison. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, let's put in some of the fixed tricks here. We're flying through this pretty quickly. Although that's that's what I like. You know, we normally hang out for about an hour and I like that we just slam through that B part, or that A part rather, because we're just about to start the B part. B part. So I heard this like crazy accidental in there, in this B part, and it sounded like Oh God, I don't even know what it sounded like. It was almost like he implied like a major two chord or a major six chord or something. I heard like a, just like a, a pang of like, oh, what is that note? Um, let's listen. <laughs> yeah, right there, right there. Uh, so what is that? If that's a, a C sharp, so that's like a, I don't know, like a, a flat nine. So he would be implying like the major six chord, yeah. So, right, that note right there. Then in my head, I sort of turned that into a, uh, he, he plays. And I heard that note is like an A major chord. It doesn't make sense functionally or anything. That's just what my brain tried to classify that as. <laughs> What a funky little line. Joe, you're right. You're totally right. Because he's about to go up there. Yeah. 
Έτσι κόμμα εδώ. Something like that. What pick do I use? The old pick doc. I'm using a blue chip Tad 50. I don't know if that's going to refocus on that. I don't think it will. Um, the most important thing for maximum speed is that it says Billy Goat on the back. Otherwise, they don't really work, and I don't know why. Um, no, blue chips are great. Um, a lot of people that, uh, a lot of great flat pickers out there are using uh, the 50s and the 60s. Um, seem to be the most common size of the of the tad here. Um, it's a very popular pick, though. Um, they're they're really cool though. They're really grippy. They create a great zone, and uh, and they're a little bit sticky, which is neat. This is like the weirdest thing. Um, I often forget that <laughs> they are that way. That they're kind of tacky. Blue chip gang represent. Yeah, that's right. Everyone type what kind of blue chip you play <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Uh. Man, is that too fast for for everyone or just me? Because I feel like I'm just guessing what I heard now. We I, we got to slow it down. We got to do the old slow down routine. You hit the settings wheel. You go to playback speed. You select something a little more reasonable. Let's go down to half speed. Let's listen again. No, I went back too far. Okay, that's where we were. Gotta actually. Uh, those don't exist. I did an oopsie doopsie. I should have slowed it down earlier and now we're fixing my mistakes. That's no good. That's okay. Because we have tools like Bar Ranger and Guitar Pro. Thanks. Don, I think it's just me and you and the blue chip gang. I don't know where everyone else is, but no, no other blue chip gangs here. Joey, do you not play a blue chip? Oh, hey, what's up, Austin? I didn't see your message like forever ago. I hope you're still here. Thanks for checking in. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Oh, I think I'm just getting a couple chat messages late. I think that's what's up. There's my blue chip gang. What's up? Hey, Austin. <laughs> I know. They are, they are a little spendy. Especially if you get them engraved. <laughs> oh, you're using those, like, uh, what are they called? The, the prime tones? Or whatever, something like that. Wonder if I have if I have a prime tone handy, we can show off the fake blue chip. I don't think I do. I have a bunch of other a bunch of other picks that probably cost me too much money. I think I have some prime tones back in the bookcase over there. I'm not gonna grab them. 
Um, I was thinking we could do the the live tone reveal, the tone off, but maybe it's not the time. <laughs> uh. Yeah, prime tones. Prime tones are the one. Tortoise shell. Someone asking about tortoise. Tortoise is not all it's cracked up to be, folks. You know, I just want to point that out now. I'll demo a tortoise shell pick and you guys can hear the difference. Because I want to, I don't know, maybe dissuade people a little bit from buying illegal tortoise shell picks because they're not magic. A lot of people will tell you they're magic. So here we go. So this is the blue chip. And here is a genuine tortoiseshell pick. What happens with the tortoiseshell pick is you get a little more like string scrapey, like crackly noise. The blue chip has a much like rounder, fuller. I don't know, almost just like a, an honest sound. Whereas there's something like in the way when you play with tortoise shell. But yeah, save the torties. That's right. Um, I would. I'd go blue chip all the way. Um, I I appreciate the sentiment. I get why people like tortoise shell picks and all that, but I don't know. It doesn't do it for me as much as I thought it would. When you lose a blue chip, it stings for a while. Try snapping a blue chip in half, man. That's what really stings. Um, I have totally snapped a blue chip in half. I was trying to turn, um, you know those, uh, like in, in a mic clip, that have the adjusters for the different uh, like stand sizes? I had one of those stuck in a mic clip, and I tried to use my blue chip to turn it, and the blue chip just snapped in my hand. Um, and it was a blue chip that I had been playing probably for you know, like five years. Uh, <laughs> so that's a little bit of a bummer. How do you hold your pick? Yeah, of course. So you make a fist, put your thumb on top, put the pick in with the point sticking out. Those are all the secrets I can give you. If you try to hold the pick with like fingers facing forward like this, then um, you kind of have too many cooks in the kitchen, too many muscle groups sort of moving around trying to control this thing. You feel like you're more in control, but it just gets in the way. If you hold it like a fist, it's sort of a, a simpler machine. It go up and down, it plays string. Um, if you're thinking about technique on the instrument, you can have an open hand, you can have a closed hand. What it's really about is it's about holding tension. It's about holding weight. You don't really want to flex any muscles that don't have to do with playing the guitar. So if you have an open hand, make sure that your, your hand is loose, right? That someone could slap your hand away from the instrument. Um, if you have an open hand and you're really locking in, you're tightening all these muscles along here, that's not going to help you play the instrument any better. It's sort of in the way. So think about that. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we got here? I feel like chat's blowing up and I'm missing things. All right. You've convinced me. What if I can't spend 30 to $40 on a blue chip? Yeah, that's when everyone's talking about the prime tones. <laughs> Have I ever tried Dragonheart? No, they're the ones that make like really thick picks, right? Um, they're like 10 millimeters. I haven't tried those yet. Uh, just play what's in the pick bowl. I hear you, Scooter. Um, Tony's Breaks on Texas Gales. We'll get there at some point. Uh, just not today, probably. Um, I don't get his rhythm in the beginning of the B part, like measure three and four. I think that minor two throws me off or something. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a funky thing that's happening right here. Uh, but I mean, the nice thing is that this is just consistent eighth notes. So if you're hitting this quarter note here and this quarter note here, that should help you feel that rhythm. Um, cool, let's try it. It was the pick holding tip that made me sign up for lessons. <laughs> Good. So this sounds like this. And hey, watch. 
why don't I even play it so you have the tab on the screen? Here we go. It's just a lot of eighth notes, and you just kind of got to, you know, blaze on by that funky note. Don't think too hard about it. I guess fifth fret. Um, there's, there's lots of alternatives to the blue chips. I love that things have gone this way. We're having this conversation. Yeah, there's, uh, it's not that, you know, blue chips are, are the only pick that you can possibly use. Um, they're just very popular among a lot of top bluegrass players. And, um, that's just, that's just the truth. <laughs> um, I, I really like them. I've tried lots of different picks. I, I just prefer them. Um, if you're looking for something that's cheaper, yeah, try some of all these other companies. There's there's a boutique company too called um I'll show you guys one. Um they're called uh Miller Picks. And this guy makes these picks uh off Etsy. And uh, they're very similar to blue chips if I hold up too. Um and they're they're relatively close in sound too. They're much cheaper. Um that might be the alternative for you too, and you can sort of support local as it were. Hey Austin's still here. <laughs> uh i didn't want to believe the blue chip was worth it but it is when you play guitar a lot yeah yeah it's it's funny to me that as guitar players that we tend to spend a lot of money on like the guitar itself and the outboard gear and everything else but when it comes to like the physical thing that connects you to the instrument that you you pluck and you make sound with we tend to be a little stingy um and that's funny to me. You spend money on everything else, well, why not the guitar pick? I don't know. My two cents, once again. Hey, what's up, Avery? Avery is an old timer around these parts. Y'all show show respect to your elders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have some billy goats. All right, what do we got going on now? The problem is picks are easy to lose. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. Um, I think that the first time I got an expensive pick, which would have been about like a $15, I think they're $15, the John Pierce uh, Fast Turtles, their casein pick, um, that made me not lose picks anymore. Suddenly I was very concerned about where the guitar pick was at all times, and I treated it a little more carefully. Um, and like I said, I've only ever owned truly own two blue trips in my life and one of them I snapped and this is my second one. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I've managed not to lose them, which is, is pretty lucky, you know, fingers crossed and all that. Um, uh, casing. Yeah. Casing, casing is 
close to tortoise and it is a really cool material the thing that i don't like about casein picks is like if you keep them in your like hot pocket or something they tend to warp a little bit sometimes tortoise shell picks do that too actually but sometimes they bend or they get a divot or they start pointing a certain direction or something and that requires like maintenance or something and i don't know if you if you're not into it that that can be a lot of work so you'd be wary of that <laughs> uh, yeah keep it in the little pocket of your jeans so you can get a little pick holder i guess i don't have mine i have one on my keys um yeah uh, honestly I, I just keep mine in my guitar all the time my guitar hangs right here when it's in the case it's got the pick in it with it you know <laughs> you're not talking about toilet paper over there scooter <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it seems like the next B part is pretty similar. Okay, that is different. So we're going to do a little bit of the copy and paste magic. I guess let's check see if you did a strum move too. Yeah, I told totally the Maybe we'll do the old copy and paste maneuver. You know, initially we were putting these drums in parentheses and then we kind of let that go. So maybe we'll have to normalize that when we get to the end. It seems like all of this is the same on a second round through the B part and then he changes here. Oh, never put the expensive picks in your pocket. Are you talking about when you're playing other people's expensive picks? Because I agree with that. People try to walk off with my picks. <laughs> Timber tone picks are those like wooden picks. I've tried a couple of those, um, but they always seem kind of brittle. Um, I don't know if that's what you're talking about or if that's a different company. I, I have no idea. Um, I think that's how that backstepping line started. It's not a true pattern because I think he breaks it right there. All right, that's it. Uh, let's just grab this drum. But yeah, that is, uh, I guess we did it here. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's he's shooting for kind of a resolution thing when you say tonicizing the five chord, right? And he's, I don't know. I mean, he's shooting for tension and then a resolve and like, I get it. But yeah, like over here, he's playing like the, the minor third of the G chord and stuff. Like it's funky. And then this is just its own problem. <laughs> it's its own thing. But yeah, if this is a leading tone to like a D minor feeling and then he's moving it to G, like I get it. But it's not great. It's funky. It's funky for sure. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I feel I feel good about this. I think I want to go through and turn some of these strums into parentheses strums because they're so quiet when he actually does them. I want to make sure that's clear in the in the written transcription. Nice. All right, let's blast through some pick strokes. This was quite the uh, guitar pick discussion here today. 
I did I did not see things going that way, but I get it. You guys want to talk about guitar picks? Maybe I asked you a video where I demo a bunch of guitar picks. Ah, huh, how about that? YouTube video idea pitch crew right now. I was actually thinking about doing a video like that for, for a little bit of time, but I haven't quite gotten around to it. Maybe we will. <laughs> Matt's checking in like, oh yeah, Marcel, you're still here. Yeah, good job. <laughs> uh, maybe I can sneak all of this onto the page and I can play it for you real quick. This is always so janky. Okay, there we go. Um, I know you guys can't see this very well. It's it's kind of just for me to see it. I'm gonna see if I can play through the whole thing. Let's see. Here we go. For a first run through, I think I can I can be happy with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, a pick and strings video, yeah, that would be fun. I think I've talked about my preference of all those things in different in different places, but it would be fun to do a video on that isolated concept for sure. Um, if you guys don't already know, um, I play the uh, Diodario. You can see I have like a million open packs of these. Diodario mediums. I think they're the EJ-17s. Um, phosphor bronze mediums. I really like them. Um, when I'm not playing those, I really like straight up strings. Here's a bunch of those too. Um, <laughs> the straight up strings, um, I think provide a better like tonal quality, but they're also like nicer. So if I'm just playing my guitar, teaching lessons and stuff, I'd rather just string up with the sort of the Diodarios because because I cherish these, I like these. I've made a mess over here now. Yikes. <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but strings everywhere. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. I think we might we might have reached the end. This may be our 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 weekly our weekly hour long hangout. Um, Mon L strings too. Yeah, they did the the Tony Rice signature ones for a while. I like those. Um, I don't know. There's there's something about something about those that that I didn't love quite as much. But I, I don't exactly recall um, my feelings on them without playing them again. But for some reason, I didn't, I didn't make them my regular go-tos. Do I find straight ups last longer? Um, I think they, I think they break in faster and they stay broken in. Um, so I wonder if, like, maybe if you're the kind of person that really likes like the bright sound of like a new string, maybe they're not the ones for you. Um, I'm not sure. Hey, no problem. I'm glad you guys liked it. Um, this tab will, of course, be on the website, just like always, unless I get that old cease and desist from Homespun. This tab will be on the website for free, uh, probably in the next, I don't know, at least in the next week. Um, we always do stream highlights, so if you want to see like uh, sort of the greatest hits of this live stream, that comes out next week on Wednesday. So tomorrow, the stream highlights from last week will come out. Um, you know, time release, double dip on the content, if you will. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Um, do I ever play John Pierce strings? I don't. Um, 
I've actually never even tried them, so I should. Um, I really like John Pierce as a company, though. <laughs> I use their bridge pins and other materials. I used to play their picks. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you. All, I'll see you all next time. Um, I'm hoping that another video will come out by the end of this week. We'll see if that actually happens. Um, you all have you all have a great evening. I'm gonna sneak off, do some video editing, and teach a bunch of lessons. I'll see you all later. Now how